Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical and welcome back to a, another video. Today for you guys, I thought I'd bring you a short and sweet one, but I really did want to get this out and make it its own little video, uh, even though we've already previously talked about this in the video explaining the Remind content. That is more of a long form video and so I wanted to get this into its own little short and sweet thing for ease of access. Uh, most people know how we are going to be able to obtain both the Oathkeeper and Oblivion at this point, but for the people that don't, here is a video for you guys. Now both the Oathkeeper and Oblivion will be available to use on the very same day that the Remind DLC comes out, which is January 23rd. It's important to note that these Keyblades are not actually part of the Remind DLC, meaning that you don't actually need to purchase the DLC in order to use these Keyblades. They are 100% free and will be a part of the free update that will also release on the same day as Remind. Now, there are actually some prerequisites in order to actually use these Keyblades, and we're going to talk about those now, as well as also talking a bit about both forms that also follow with these Keyblades. Quite some time after Kingdom Hearts 3's release, via update 1.05, which was the Critical Mode and New Game Plus Mode update, Square Enix also sneakily added in two new items, known as the Proof of Promises and the Proof of Times Past, both of which are given to the player after they complete certain things. So let's first of all start off with the Oathkeeper. In order to obtain the Oathkeeper Keyblade, you're going to need to have the Proof of Promises. In order to get this special page item, you're going to need to photograph all 90 lucky emblems from throughout the game. Once you've photographed the 90th emblem, you will then receive the page. At this stage in time, we don't currently know the name of the form that follows for the Oathkeeper Keyblade, although because of the fact that the form that follows for the Oblivion Keyblade is known as Dark Form, it's very likely that the Oathkeeper's form will be known as Light Form. Within the Remind trailers of the Oathkeeper form gameplay, unfortunately the command menu isn't part of the heads up display, meaning that we actually haven't seen the official name just yet. The outfit of the Oathkeeper form consists of white, grey and black colours, and the detailing on the outfit for the hoodie as well as the two legs for the pants is actually the teeth of the Oathkeeper Keyblade that interesting looking star design. Both forms for both the Oathkeeper as well as the Oblivion aren't the traditional Keyblade transformations, but more so lean towards the way that second form works. So rather than actually transform your Keyblade into something funky, you keep a hold of that Keyblade, but Sora's combos completely change. In the sense of what we're going to be calling at this stage Light Form, it looks like it consists of a series of extremely fast hits and combos. Which a lot of the time it honestly looks like if a boss or enemy is stuck within this combo, good luck getting out of it. I would say that this is going to be really really good for essentially combo locking things. And because of the fact that the attacks and combos are just so fast, it looks like this form is going to be extremely bursty. Moving over to the Oblivion Keyblade, you'll need the proof of times past in order to obtain this Keyblade. This proof is awarded to the player once they successfully complete critical mode and no, you don't have to do the additional post-game stuff on Critical in order to get this page, you just simply need to finish the story. The form that follows for this Keyblade consists of darker colours, as it is known as Dark Form, basically the entire form outfit is pretty much black. This one looks extremely swagger. The detailing on this outfit for the hoodie and the two legs for the pants, just like the Oathkeepers, looks to be that the details are actually the teeth of the Oblivion Keyblade. Now we have haven't seen Dark Form's combos in action, but like I was saying with the Oathkeeper's form, this will be working very similar in the sense of Sora still keeps the Keyblade whilst in this form, there is no Keyblade transformation, so this will be changing up Sora's combos to hopefully something more so darkness orientated. I don't think it'll be quite to the point of say something like Rage Form's crazy combos or anything like that, but more so darkness based combos that are tactical. What we have seen of Dark form in action is simply just its guard at this point, but I have to say what an absolutely beautiful looking guard. This would have to hands down be the most sexiest looking guard that I think I've seen throughout the Kingdom Hearts series as a whole. Dark form's guard is a barrier guard which means that you can guard from any direction, anything thrown at you, don't worry you're going to be fine from all angles. The reason why this guard looks absolutely so amazing is not just because it's a barrier 
rear guard, but the chains that wrap around Sora, which is very, very appropriate for that of the Oblivion Keyblade, as there is actually a chain that goes through the actual Keyblade itself. The counter for this form is known as Dark Burst, which does make sense. Any sort of uh, form that allows you to perform a barrier guard, if you successfully guard it, its counter is known as a Counter Burst, just like Boom Hammer as an example right here. And Burst counters kind of work as a Blast AoE attack. I do kind of hope that within the combos of Dark Form, the chain is also somehow implemented as well. That would be super cool. Now, the big lingering question as of right now is exactly how are these proofs going to work, considering that specifically for the proof of times past, you can only obtain that on a critical mode save file. Now, Square Enix haven't really sort of made anything clear at this point as to how all of this is going to collectively work, but what I am hoping is, once you've obtained these proofs, for every save file that you have, the game recognizes that you've already obtained both pages. Meaning that you can essentially just start a new game on whatever difficulty you want, the game will pick up on a different save file that you have previously obtained for the proof of promises as well as proof of times past and you'll automatically be given the keyblades. The only reason why I mention this is there is a tad bit of confusion with people saying, well I have the proof of times past through obviously completing my critical save file, but then my proof of promises is over on a different save file that is on proud mode, for instance. So uh, the question is, do you absolutely need both proofs on a critical file, or is it possible to use both save files to start a new game plus in order to get, obviously, the keyblades? That is the question as of right now. Obviously you can only use one cleared save file to start a new game plus and if that is the only way of receiving these keyblades it does mean that people will need to uh, get the proof of promises on their critical mode save file. I'm sure at some point Square Enix will give out more information to clarify this lingering question uh, closer to the time of the release of the Remind DLC. But that right there guys is how you obtain the Oath Keeper as well as Oblivion Keyblade which again will be releasing as a free update on the same day as Remind. That's all from me today guys, hopefully you dudes having a fantastic day, I'm Cynical and until next time I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Hit him on a page, you'll be coming through stain. Go dip my mouth when you suckers be bluffing. Look, crank, gaming up your bitch though. Catch me in the back, play your Super Nintendo.